Did you ever imagine that Lightroom Classic would have AI tools? Me neither. But guess what? It's here. A new tool called Generative Remove uses AI to help you get rid of unwanted stuff in your images. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor and in this video you'll learn about that tool as well as what else is new in the latest update to Lightroom Classic version 13.3. So if you're ready to dig in, let's get started. Before I open up Lightroom, let's take a look at a list of the things that are new in this update. As I already mentioned, there's a brand new tool called Generative Remove that uses AI technology. In a moment, I'll show you where to find it and how to use it. Next on the list is the Lens Blur tool, which was previously in a beta or early release mode. It has now been fully released. I'll talk a little bit about that and show you some examples of that as well. If you are a Sony user, you may be excited to know that there is now tethered capture available for you. Then something else that's new is the ability to filter and sort by exported images. And finally, there's some new support for additional cameras and lenses that previously weren't supported by Camera Raw and Lightroom Classic. If you want to read more about these items on the Adobe website, I'll put a link for you in the description below. So now let's hop over to Lightroom and take a look at these things. First, let's look at the Remove tool. Previously, you'll notice the icon here was a band-aid and it was called the Heal and Clone tool. Now you'll notice it's just called Remove. When you click and open it, now you'll see the title here at the top, Remove, and you still have the options for healing and clone stamping. But going back to the first icon on the left here is where you'll find the new options with Generative AI. Previously, we only had Content Aware Fill or Remove. Now you have this option here for Generative AI. If you click this little I, it will take you to the Adobe website to get more information about using these AI or artificial intelligence tools. You'll notice that it is labeled as early access, so it's in a beta testing mode. As such, you're able to provide feedback to Adobe on this tool, just click this link here. So if you're giving it a trial and come up with something that is less than expected, or you'd like to give them some suggestions and feedback on your results or what you would like it to do, just click that and send it to Adobe. So let's see how it works. First, we just need to check this box and then you have the usual brush that you can paint over something that you want to remove. I'm going to attempt to remove this blue dish from beside the dog. Once you've got the item that you want highlighted, you can either add or subtract to the selection. For example, if I didn't get it quite right, I can remove a little bit here. You want to mask a little bit around the thing you want to remove. So make sure to get all of it and including any shadows. Notice I've painted over the shadow of the bowl here. Then just click apply. This is using AI technology, which is sending the information to the cloud and bringing it back to Lightroom and your image. So it can take a moment or two to fill the new item in. This is dependent on your internet speed, not your computer speed. So if you find that it's going slowly, make sure that you're hardwired to the internet and use a fast connection if possible. Okay, now we can see that it has removed the bowl but we're not done just yet. If you've tried the generative tools in Photoshop, you'll know that you got three versions from which to pick. The same is true here. If we look right here, it says variations, and we can just click the arrows to scroll through the three options provided. Here's the second one and the third one. If you don't like any of them, you can just hit refresh and it will run through it again and give you three new options. Make note, however, that the original three are now gone and you can never get them back, even if you do an undo, because undo will just remove the cloning altogether. So if you like one, make sure to save it. If you want to try it again, make a virtual copy of that image and then run it a second time on the copy. 
Here's our next three. I think I like number three. That looks pretty realistic. Another option here is object aware. Click this box and then when you paint over something in your image, ideally what you want to remove, you don't have to paint super carefully. Just select what you want with the paintbrush and then Photoshop will analyze it to find the object. Once it's done so, you end up at the mask refinement page again when you can subtract or add any bits that it has missed. So now I'm going to try and remove the dog's collar. There's the results and we can scroll through three options. I think number three is pretty good. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, here's a fun test. Take a look at this image and tell me in the comment area below, is this the original or have I already removed some things? What do you think? Look closely. Is there anything that doesn't look believable? If you said, yes, I've done some removals, you were right. Let's look at the before. Can you see what I've done? Let me go back to the original image to show you the difference. I removed the knife, the egg, this little dish here, and I tried to remove the contents of the cup and it ended up looking like there was less liquid. See the difference? But if we look at each of the items, we still have the options of scrolling through the three choices. You could see the egg here, the little dish here. I think I like this one better. So as with all edits in Lightroom, it's non-destructive and you can alter and tweak them at any time. If I don't like these edits, I can just reset the tool and it goes back to the original. But I wasn't done here. I thought I would have some fun and see what else I could do with this tool. So I took it to the next level. Okay, now we're just getting into craziness, right? I've removed everything except the bowl and the contents. I've even removed the egg and the fork inside the bowl. But I wasn't done yet. I took it to one more level. I tried a few times to completely erase the bowl and it kept giving me something else, including a clock. Why? I have no idea. So I thought I would try to remove the dog in the other image. Want to see what happened? Are you ready? Lightroom turned him into a cat. I had a pretty good laugh over this one because it's kind of ridiculous. So as with any of the other generative tools, including those in Photoshop, it's a bit of a hit and miss operation. Sometimes it works really well and other times not so much. So experiment with the tool and see how you can make it work for you. I find when you're trying to remove small distracting elements, it works exceedingly well. When you try and remove larger things, that's when I ran into some trouble. But give it a go and have some fun with it like I did. It's worth a chuckle. Next up is the lens blur tool. The only real change here is that it's out of the early access or beta mode. You can still find it in the same location under transform and to apply it, you just click apply. It'll analyze your image and then you can adjust the settings. So far, I've found it to still be a little bit on the slow side, and it does seem to take a lot of computer resources. On my MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM, it's still slow. I do have a brand new iMac M2 coming this week, so I'll try it on that new computer and see if it's any faster. But so far, I've still found it lags quite a bit. As you can see here, it does a really nice job of blurring the background and making it a realistic bokeh blur. The boost slider will give a little bit more brightness to any highlights that you have in the background and enhance any bokeh that may be there. I tried this one on several different kinds of images to see how well it could separate the subject from the background. In this image of the dog, it's pretty straightforward because the dog is dark and the fence behind him is light colored, so it's easy to separate. And you can see I've created a nice blur. You can also use these tools here. If you click on the one with the little person icon, it selects what it thinks is the subject. If you choose this one, you can target a little bit more precisely. Watch what happens to the focus range when I use the target and then just draw a box over the dog's face. 
See how it shrunk the focus range a little bit? So it got more precise with which part of the image it got in focus and which it was blurring. I did the same on this image of the lady. I wanted to blur the background, but I also wanted to blur the foreground. So let's see how it worked. You'll notice when subject is selected, again, there's a bit wider range. If I zoom in to the grass, you can really see how it's applying here. It's not doing a great job of fading. See the line is really harsh. So let's try this targeted tool and I'm just going to draw over her legs here. Once again, you'll notice how it shrunk the depth of field or the focal range. Now less of the grass is in focus and I can get even more precise by dragging the sliders. So this is great at replicating a really wide aperture and a very narrow depth of field. The next scenario I tried it on was a really close face shot. I wanted to see if I could get one eye sharp and have the focus fall off to the back of her face. This is what I was able to come up with using the lens blur tool. It's pretty good. You can see that I've chosen this shape for the bokeh and it's replicated here on the sparkles on her neck. If we turn on visualize depth, you can see that I've got it really narrowed down to just this part of her face. I also used the mask refinement brushes because it got the side of her face not quite right. So I just used those to fix it. So again, it's replicating a really narrow depth of field from a lens with a really big aperture. If you don't have an f1.2 or 1.4 lens in your bag, you can use this tool to create that effect. I tested it on a couple of group portraits as well, including this one of the three kids. I wanted to see if it could pick out a background that was from a different camera angle like this one. And you could see that it did a good job. Likewise, in this family photo that is typical of a snapshot any of us have taken of our family on a holiday, you could see that it also did a really nice job blurring the background and making the people stand out more. So hopefully this tool will only get better with time, but it's pretty good right out of the gate. My only stumbling block is the amount of resources it seems to take and its speed. Going back to the girl with the sparkles on her cheek, I wanted to see if I could use these two new tools together. So I already used the lens blur to create the shallow depth of field. Then I applied the generative remove and got rid of the sparkles. I even use it to remove the lines and wrinkles on her neck. So I'm excited to play with this tool a little more on that kind of retouching. Here's another edit I did just for fun. I wanted to blur the background. So that was successful using the lens blur tool. But then I wanted to see if I could remove the whole girl. Let's see what happened. Yikes, it turned her into a cactus. So similar to the puppy that got turned into a cat, the girl is now a cactus. Oops. Before I move on to the last new thing in this update, I just want to bring to your attention that I have a full course available called Lightroom for Photographers. If you want complete education on how to use Lightroom from the beginning, this is the course for you. There's over 15 hours and 47 lessons and you get my raw files so you can follow along and practice exactly what is being taught in the lesson. There's a link to the course in the description area below for you if you want to check it out. Now, before I show you the last thing, which is how to search for exported images, I want to just bring a few things to your attention about the other tools we've already looked at. First thing to note, I already mentioned, is the generative remove tool is a bit hit and miss, as you saw with the images of the dog and the girl. I did have some other success removing things in the food image, and I also was successful in completely removing this dog. So it's really just trial and error. You have to test it out and see what works and what doesn't. It's not a 100% success rate every time. Also worth noting is that there's no text prompt that comes along with this tool. If you've used the generative fill tool inside of Photoshop, you'll be familiar with this. It allows you to enter a few descriptive words to help Photoshop know what you want to replace in the image. 
That is not an option in Lightroom. Yet. We'll have to see where it goes. Another thing that's not clear to me, and I've not been able to find out so far, is where are these options being stored? Are they being put into your Lightroom catalog? Or are they still up in the cloud? And likewise, is Adobe tracking your use? With Photoshop, you have a number of different credits to use for generative tools. Is that the case here? Not sure. If you know the answer to that question, please let us know in the comment area below. And the final two things to note I've already mentioned, which are once you replace the first three options that you get, they're gone and you can't get them back and that the lens blur tool is still a little bit on the slow side. Okay, let's get back to the last new thing in Lightroom update 13.3. The final new thing in this Lightroom update, at least the one that I can demonstrate for you, is the ability to filter by export status. What that means is you can find all of your images that have previously been exported. Let's take a look. I'm in a folder currently that contains 40 images. You can see that here. To activate the filter, use the backslash key while in the library module and you'll get the filter bar. Then go to attribute and you'll see a new option here in the middle, export. If you click this one, it's going to show all the images that have previously been exported. If we click this one, it's going to show non-exported images. So these are ones that may or may not have been edited, but they've never been exported through the Lightroom process. To reset it, just click it again. You can also get to the filter in the metadata section and just change it to the new option, which is exported files. Then you can see that there are 23 files which have been exported and 17 which have not. You can also use this new criteria to create a smart collection. Just choose the plus sign like usual, give your smart collection a name, then change the criteria to exported and set the other parameters. I'll just say before today. Then when you create the collection, it now will demonstrate any images in your entire catalog that have been exported before today, in this case. You can also check the exported date of any file. For example, this image of Las Vegas, just make sure you're on the metadata tab in the library module, change it to the default preset, and then when you click customize, you can choose to show the exported date and it shows up here at the bottom. I'm not sure how useful this feature is, but it's there if you ever need to use it. I have a quick question for you. Do you think you're going to find these new tools, in particular, the generative remove tool helpful in your photo editing workflow? I'm really excited to try it on glasses reflections. It's something that most photographers struggle with to remove. So I'm eager to see how well that new generative tool can solve that age old problem. Remember to check out Lightroom for Photographers, my complete course. And if you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, click one on the screen now. As always, keep practicing with your Lightroom and photo editing and have a great week.